What's up, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint, here with the Batman Eternal Omnibus Review. We're going to keep it spoiler-free, so stay tuned. Alright guys, I wanted to keep this spoiler free because I know a lot of you watch these reviews to determine if you want to buy it or not. And although, I don't know if I like the idea of you buying something or not because of what I thought, I am going to give my opinions on this book. This is by Scott Snyder and James Tenney in the fourth. And I agree with what I've heard from others that it's okay. This book has its ups and its downs. It's definitely not as strong as the Snyder Capullo run during the same time frame in the uh, New 52 era. But I think it is worth a read overall. This was a weekly book that was published during, like I said, the New 52 era. It has 52 issues, plus this includes a Batman issue. And it starts off really strong. It starts off with James Gordon underground chasing these criminals. And there's kind of a, a fork in the road, separation in tunnels. He follows one guy. The guy pulls a gun. He shoots him, the bullet goes through the gun, like intangibly, hits a fuse box that wasn't there, and derails two trains that crash together, and like 126 people die, and James Gordon is like screwed, right? So he goes to Blackgate, and that's how he starts. So it sounds exciting, right? But then for like the first third of the book, this, this omnibus gets boring as hell. And the problem is that it just lacks Batman. They gave so much shine to the Bat family. Batwing, which is Lucius Fox's son. Batgirl, who's obviously devastated that her father is locked up with all these people he put behind bars. And and obviously, he's innocent. He Something is up. Something Somebody set him up somehow to make him see a gun in that hand and not see that junction box. So the Batgirl stuff is okay. Uh, you have some Batwoman stuff, some Red Robin, some Jason Todd, Red Hood. Not really any Damien stuff. But I think that, and then you have like this, these side stories of these supporting characters that just drags the book down. They do end up becoming important later, like this girl that goes by Spoiler, and her father Clue Master, and then you have this other chick that becomes Bluebird, and she starts working with Red Robin. But uh, the build up to that is just, it, it, it was a chore to read. But once I got about halfway through this book, I was reading... 10 issues at a sitting and it went by really fast and the, the whole big thing is it's a whole who done it who is the one that set up uh, james gordon and kind of played all the batman villains as pawns you see a return of a lot of popular batman villains and you get this surprise twist at the end right so that's kind of this book in a nutshell um i really disliked how they handled catwoman i thought she was a terrible she was written terribly in this and along with Killer Croc, who was who was better? You get some uh, Penguin stuff as one of the big players around town. Your boy Falcone comes back, and we get um, a new commissioner, this James Bard, which is a little bit confusing too because he's handpicked right before this goes down by James Gordon. Is it J Jason Bard? I think. Anyway, yeah, Gordon Gordon brings him in. He's like the new guy that's that's willing to do what it takes to you know make Gotham a safe place to live. Uh, and then he's he's fighting with his commissioner, and then he uh, it gets a little confusing there, and and, and it kind of goes back and forth a few times on this guy's role. But at the end of the day, like I said, it, it is worth checking out. But just know that it's going to drag along, at least in my opinion, in the first uh, third of this book. You don't really need to know anything else before going into this. It does kind of reference that this is the aftermath of death of the family. It's after like a big Joker event in the city. So that's kind of like where this takes place. And yeah, that's about it, man. We'll keep it short and sweet. Um, let's take a look at some of the artwork together. And, you know, we'll probably recall some of the events of the book that I missed. All right, here's a good look at the dust jacket for Batman Eternal. The artwork was good, man. You had, like I said, James Tinney in the fourth. I'm a really big fan of him. He's taking over Batman now in Rebirth. Jason Fabook is a great artist as well. And Scott Snyder is like one of the, arguably one of the best writers uh, of this generation. But it didn't really make for the perfect storm. Dust Jacket looks good though. Spine looks good. It's funny now reading the book. This makes so much more sense to me than when I just did that, this haul video. Here's the inside of the Dust Jacket. The wraparound cover of the spine kind of shows us a lot of what we're dealing with but this was during the end during a more exciting time but with batgirl batwoman uh bluebird spoiler 
Batwing, she's not even really in it. That's Batman, Red Hood, Red Robin, and this guy. <laughs> um, yeah, we won't talk about that. And of course, you got Gordon there in the front. So anyway, so Batman Eternal Omnibus. This had a one hundred and twenty-five dollar cover price, and like I said, it's really uh, fifty-three issues. Although the 52 issues of these series, I understand, are about 10 issues shorter than a normal issue. But look how this thing starts off, man. You got the back carved in his chest. Gotham's on fire. And uh, it really starts off really, really strong, man. This is our new guy. Um, like I said, Bard. What's his name? Must be Jason Bard. You got this guy, Professor Pig. I made a joke. Like, anytime... Professor Pig is in a uh, an issue. I don't know what the hell's going on. There is this kind of like <laughs> sub story with Spectre and um, and Batwing with like some supernatural story that is kind of not necessary in this book at all. So Gotham gets pretty bad. They actually have to instate martial law and. It gets kind of crazy. Batgirl gets kind of crazy too, you know, trying to find who framed her father to get him out of jail. He goes your boy behind bars. You got Clue Master with his daughter Stephanie, who ends up going by Spoiler. He's kind of like a loser, a D-list villain that no one takes seriously, a, a knockoff uh, Riddler, and she ends up having you know some a nice skill set of her own. But talk about the worst parenting in comic book history. Those who have read it know what I'm talking about. Batwing is a cool character. It's, I mean, it's kind of like an Iron Man-Batman hybrid. Oh, and then you got Alfred. I almost forgot. So Alfred's daughter comes up, like Alicia Silverstone style. But she works for, like, the British government or whatever. And uh, it's funny because Batman, you know, refers to Alfred as Penny One. Kind of like a code name when they're on the intercom. And she, she ends up coming through and she's Penny too. But, I mean, it doesn't happen that fluently, but it happens. You get a good amount of the rogues gallery. You get Poison Ivy. You get Mr. Freeze, Bane. You get Joker's daughter who, I guess she was just a new 52 thing, but I didn't really ever enjoy anything I read her in. Clayface a little bit. But... If you could get through the beginning of this book, it's worth it's worth a read for sure. You do have great artwork. And at the end of the day, the story does wrap up nice. All right, guys, so that's the Batman Eternal Omnibus. Uh, let me know what you think about it if you read it in the comments below. If you haven't read it yet, what do you think, man? Is this something that you're going to check out? And I would love to hear your thoughts. If so, make sure to hit that like on the way out and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Stay minty fresh. Peace.